God has called you to live a wonderful life. He has called you and prepared for you a wonderful future. And God wants you to know the riches of his glory which is the inheritance of the saints that will make you to live this wonderful life. We are called to live a wonderful life. We are not called to a life of toiling, a life of struggling, a life of sickness and disease, a life of poverty. No, we are called into a wonderful life. And this wonderful life, there are things that will make you to live this wonderful life. What are these things? The riches of his glory. The riches of his glory is the inheritance of the saints. Once you access the riches of his glory, then you're going to have a wonderful life. In Ephesians 3.16, Ephesians 3.16, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory all from the riches of his glory to be strengthened to be empowered to do the naturally impossible by the anointing of might by spirit in the inner man that will grant you according or from the riches of his glory is going to get from the riches of his glory what is he going to get from the riches of his glory, the anointing of might that is going to empower you to do the naturally impossible. From the riches of his glory, is going to get the anointing of might. And this anointing of might is going to put on you. It is God's ability that enables you to do what you cannot be able to do with your own ability. God's ability that enables you to attain what you cannot be able to attain with your own ability. It is God's ability rubbed on your ability for you to attain, for you to achieve, for you to do what you cannot be able to do with your own ability. This anointing it gets it from the riches of his glory. So one of the riches of one of the treasures of one of the things from the riches of his glory is the anointing is what? Ninini. The anointing Upako. that he will grant you from the riches of his glory to be strengthened in power to do Utende. the naturally impossible with the anointing by might Upako wa by his spirit na roho wake. in the inner man. Kwa mutu so one of the one of the things or one of the riches from the riches of his glory is the anointing. Look at Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verses number 27. Colossians 1 to the 7. To whom God will make known what is the riches of this of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what are the riches? Which is what are the riches? Which is Christ? Christo. Now the word Christ is not the name of Jesus. It means the Anointed One and His anointing. The riches, he will make known what is the riches of the glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is the anointing on the anointed one in you, the hope of glory. What is the riches of this glory? And Paul answers, which is Christ. 
Christo, the anointed one Aliepakwa. and his anointing which is the hope of glory so one of the riches of the glory of God is the anointing and there are so many anointings there is the anointing of might. There is the anointing for favor. There is the anointing for healing. There is the anointing for protection. There is the anointing for preservation. There are so many anointings. All these anointings is among the riches of his glory. So in the riches of his glory, we have the anointings. Anointings, which is, if you can see there, the answer to whom God will make known what is the riches of this glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is the anointed one and his anointing, the hope of glory. The hope of the manifestation of the goodness of God. What is the riches of this glory? Which is Christ, the anointed, the anointing on the anointed one. Or the anointing and the anointed one. Or the anointed one and this anointing, which is the hope of this glory. And the reference here is to the anointing. So one of the riches of the glory of God is the anointing. And to be specific today, I want us to look at the ministry of the prophetic anointing. The ministry of the prophetic anointing. The ministry Uduma. of the prophetic anointing. God has designed the system in such a way that the destiny of every believer is connected to a prophet and is connected to a prophetic anointing. God has designed a system such that every destiny in God is connected to a prophetic ministry and a prophetic anointing. A prophet over your life is not the one who shakes. Shakes and prophesies stuff. A prophet over your life is the man called by God, ordained by God, anointed by God, and given the grace by God. And God sets him over you for the fulfillment of your destiny. A man or a woman of God, genuinely called by God, ordained by God, anointed by God, engraced by God, and put over your life for the fulfillment of your destiny. That is your prophet. That is your spiritual father. A woman man and called by God, ordained by God, anointed by God, and blessed by God, sent to you like Elijah was sent to the widow of Zarephath. Sent to you in order to help you in the fulfillment of your destiny. God has designed a system such that every believer born again, your destiny is connected to a man or woman of God, called by God, anointed by God, ordained by God, engraced by God, and sent to you. That is how his system works. God does not break protocol. It doesn't. Some people will say, I don't need a pastor. You will know you need one. Because that is how the system works. 
Jesus. Yes, who? There are people that prayed Kuna watu waliomba. for Jesus to come. Yes, who are there are people that pray for Jesus, yes, for who? the word of God, to mungu. be made flesh. Mwili. And once the word was made flesh, these people Hawa watu. that prayed for Jesus to come, yesu Jesus yesu. was taken to them for them to speak over his life. Even when Jesus came, yes, he could not do Hangetenda. without a father. Bila he baba. could not do Hangetenda. without a pastor. Bila he mtungaji. passed through a pastor in order to enter into his ministry. Kwa uduma yake. There are people that pray Kuna watu for Jesus to come. Yesu and when Jesus come, Yesu came, alipokuja. Jesus was presented to these people Yesu that pray for watu. him to come to the earth. For these people hawa watu. to bless him yeye. and to speak over his life. Jesus could not start his ministry yes, without yake. submitting Bila to the ministry of John the Baptist. He could not. Hangeweza. It is after John the Baptist spoke alinena. over Jesus ya Yesu. that God spoke. Ye, mungu nena. After John spoke, then God spoke. God did not speak until John spoke. When John spoke, then God spoke. I'll read to you the scriptures. Paul meets Jesus on the way to Damascus. But Jesus tells Paul, Go to Ananias. Enda kwa Anania. For Ananias. Kwa Anania. To usher you to your destiny. Akukaribisha kwa upeo wako. Ah, you have met Jesus. Umemkutana na Yesu. Why do you need to see another man? Mbona one mtu mwingine? Because that is how the system of God works. Fumo wa kazi na Mungu unafanya kazi. Paul met Jesus. Paul anakutana na Yesu. Hello? But Paul could not begin his ministry. Paul could not enter into his ministry until he met Ananias. It is Jesus who referred Paul to Ananias. You have met me but as the way the system of God works. You can't start enter you into your destiny until you meet an anointed man. And I'm sending you to an anointed man that is called Ananias. Ananias will usher you into your destiny. Why do you need to meet a man when you have met Jesus? Why? Why? Paul meets Jesus on the road and Paul gets saved because immediately on that road Paul goes saved. He says, Lord, you don't need to, do you need anybody to preach to you again to be saved after you meet the Lord on the road? But for Paul to enter into this, his destiny, Jesus referred Paul to Ananias after there, we don't hear of Ananias. But if Ananias did not anoint and ordain Paul, Paul would not have entered into his destiny. Hello? Is this thing entering? Jesus, the son of God, yes, comes to mungu. the earth. Anakuja duniani. He didn't come to the earth by himself. Hakuja no, kwa ke there are people here that were praying for him to come. Kuna watu aje. When he came, Alipo kuja. God himself mungu told the people that were praying, watu the child will be dedicated today. Be in church today. Speak to that child. Ule mtoto. Now let's begin with scriptures. Luke chapter 2. Every Christian, you need a man of God, ordained by God, anointed by God, to help you to fulfill your destiny. Luke chapter 2. 
Luke 2 verses 21. Are you there? Luke 2 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days of our purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opened in the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of tattered doves and a two young pigeons and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devoid waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ why he had been praying for the word to be made flesh. He had been praying for Jesus to come. And the Holy Spirit said to me, to him, you will not die until you see Jesus and you prophesy and you speak over his life. Are you seeing that? Verses number 26. Verses 27. He came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the Lord, then took him up. Then took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared for all before the face of all the people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now, Simeon knew what the father and the mother did not know. Why? Simeon had been praying for Jesus to come to the earth. Simeon knew more about Jesus than the father and the mother. So the people that were praying for Jesus to come, when Jesus was born, they took Jesus to these people that were praying for him to speak over his life, to speak over his destiny, a light to lighten the world. Did they stop there? No. Verses 34. Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel for a sign that shall be spoken against. Yea, a soul shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age and had lived with her husband for seven years from her virginity and she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple but served God with fastings, prayers night and day and she coming instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. When they performed all the things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city 
Nazareth. And the child grew, was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. At every stage in the life of Jesus, there were men of God, women of God, anointed by God, that spoke to his destiny. After he grew up, he again submitted himself to the ministry of John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3 verses 13. Then came Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. That means Jesus, I have, Jesus is saying, yes, I say have that. to fulfill all righteousness. I have to submit to you. I have to submit to your ministry to fulfill righteousness. For me to fulfill my destiny. God sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for who? For Jesus. Because Jesus could not enter into his destiny without an anointed man or woman of God. John is saying, I know you are. I know. I know who you are. I should be coming to you to be baptized by you. Why are you nawe? coming to me? I baptize you. you and Jesus said, yes, I must fulfill righteousness. I must submit to you. Submit to your ministry. Before I can enter into my own. I can't fulfill my ministry. I can't enter into my destiny until I submit to you. Until you speak over my life. Until you speak over my destiny. I must fulfill righteousness. Jesus, when he was baptized, yes, he baptized, went up straight out of the water. Lord, the heavens were opened unto him and saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. When did the heaven open? When he submitted to John. When did the heaven open over the life of Jesus? When he submitted to the ministry of John. When he submitted to the anointing of John. When did God speak over the life of Jesus? After John had spoken to the destiny of Jesus. Hello? Hello? Somebody will say, all that Jesus needed was God. No. In terms of the anointing, it does not operate like that. In terms of the anointing, they must submit to an anointed man of God, anointed ministry, for that man of God to speak over his life, speak over his destiny, and then God can speak. He said, I must submit to you to fulfill all righteousness. I must. I can't just go to God straight and tell God anoint me. No. He sent you to prepare the way for me. I have to submit to you in order for God to open the heavens, in order for God to speak over my destiny. It is after he submitted to John, after John spoke over him, that God opened the heavens and God spoke over the destiny of Jesus. 
Every destiny is connected to an anointed vessel. The destiny of Jesus was connected to Simon, was connected to Hannah, was connected to John the Baptist. Those who are men and, and the woman anointed by God that Jesus had to pass through their hands for him to fulfill his destiny. These three people had to speak to the ministry of Jesus, to the destiny of Jesus, for Jesus to fulfill his destiny. That is how it works. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, Johanna Moja, verses number 29. Tisa. Verses 29. Tisa. The next day, John see Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, Tizama, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he whom I say, After me, cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But but that it should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? How long did you get that statement? This is who whom the Lord, this is whom I said after me, come at a man which is preferred before me, for he is before me, for I knew him not but that it should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, they might come baptizing with water. Why was John baptizing with water? It was a strategy to identify Jesus. A strategy to identify Jesus. Because when Jesus was on the line, coming to be baptized, the Spirit of God said, hey, that is him. That is the Lamb of God. That is him. That is he that is preferred. That is he that is to save the world. That is he. And when Jesus reached there, and he said, hey, I have come to submit to the ministry, to your ministry. And Jesus said, and John said, no, you are greater than me. I should be submitting to you. And Jesus said, I must fulfill all righteousness. If I don't submit to you, I will not begin my own. If I don't submit to you, I will not fulfill my destiny. If you don't speak over my life, God will not speak over my life. Verse 32. Verse 32. And John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and yet abode upon him. After he submitted to the ministry of John the Baptist, the heaven opened. He was anointed and God spoke over his life. You need an anointed man of God, woman of God, to speak to your life, speak to your business, speak to your products, speak to your family, for God to speak. You need an anointed man, woman of God, to speak over your career, speak over your business, speak over your ministry, speak over your products, for God to speak. After John spoke, God spoke. After Jesus submitted to the ministry of John the Baptist, and John the Baptist spoke over his life, then now God spoke over the destiny of Jesus Christ, and God anointed him. So every believer, your destiny is connected to an anointed man of God. You need his anointing. You need his grace to help you fulfill your destiny. When you get born again, you can pray for the anointing. That anointing, you get it from God. The anointing, you can pray for the anointing. Now, the man of God, the woman of God, has been ordained and given a particular anointing 
wako a particular grace Nema to flani. carry you, to wewe. preserve you, Akuifadi. to defend you, Akukinge. and to do among other things many things. Mengi, mambo mengi. That anointing does so much in your life. Maishani mwako. It can handle what you cannot handle. That anointing can break what you cannot break. That anointing can fight what you cannot fight. That anointing carries you into the fulfillment of your destiny. So after when you are born again, you need to be connected to an anointed man of God. Anointed woman of God. Do you know what ministry is? Ministry is not a name. Ministry is the man. And the anointing. Hello. Is he entering? When we talk about the ministry of Jesus. Who are we talking about? Jesus. And the anointing on him. When we talk about the ministry of Paul. We are talking about who? Paul. And the anointing. And the grace. The ministry is the man. Anointed. And the grace. It's not a name. When we talk about the ministry of Elijah, who are we talking about? Elijah, the anointing, and the grace. When we talk about John, John, the ministry of John, John the Baptist, who are we talking about? The ministry is John, the anointing, the grace. Ministry is not the name. Ministry Huduma is the man. Ni mutu and now the man, the anointing, upako, and the grace on the man now rests on the name. Ya jina. Are you catching this thing? The anointing and the grace rest inatu, on the name. Kwa jina. And all the people that follow him, Watu the anointing, upako, anointing and the grace on him now yake. falls on the followers. Is this thing entering? Hello, is he entering? So every one of you, your destiny is connected to a spiritual father. Is connected to a man or a woman of God. Genuinely called, ordained by God, anointed by God, engraced by God, sent to you so that he can help you to fulfill your destiny. Acts. Matendo ya mitume. Chapter 9. Tisa. Acts chapter 9. Matendo ya mitume tisa. Verses number 3. Acts 9.3. Matendo ya mitume tisa nani. Are you there? Uko pale. Acts 9.3. Tisa tatu. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Kakaribu na Damascus. Suddenly, there's shine round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling, astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Rise, go into the city. It shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man we journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Saul arose from the earth. When his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him unto Damascus. And he was three days without sight. Neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here alone. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go to the street which is called Street. Inquire in the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. 
and he see in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel so, go to him. You have to speak to him. Speak over his life. Lay your hand on him. Anoint him. For him to enter into his ministry. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. He has met me. But he has to meet you before he can enter his destiny. What business do you have meeting a man when you are met Jesus? But Jesus himself said, hey, Paul, you have to meet a man to pray for you, speak over your life, for you to enter into what I've called you to do. Other human being will say, I met Jesus face to face. Why do I need a man of God? You will never fulfill your destiny until you meet a chosen vessel anointed by God, embraced by God, so that you can enjoy his anointing and his grace in the fulfillment of your destiny. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, now he's a brother. The man got born again on the day on that road. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou comest, has sent me that thou mightst receive thy sight, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes that he had been a scale. And he received sight forthwith and rose and was baptized. And when he received meat, he was strengthened. Then when Saul then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were Damascus and straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that is the son of God. He had to submit to Ananias for him to enter into his ministry, for brother Saul to become an apostle, he had to submit to Ananias. He had to submit to Ananias. There is no way brother Paul would have become an apostle. Even he met Jesus. He was still a brother. He met Jesus. Even after he met Jesus, he was still a brother. It's after he was prayed by Ananias that he became an apostle. Every believer, you need to be connected to an anointed man, woman of God, ordained by God, anointed by God, so that his grace and the anointing that God has put on his life can help you to fulfill your destiny. Every man of God receives a measure of the anointing, a measure of the grace. But through sacrifices, through denials, through laboring, through paying the price, is able to build the anointing, is able to build the grace. And then you become a beneficiary of his labor in the world, the anointing and the grace. Why does God tell you to honor your pastor? Honor your spiritual father. Because 
building the anointing, it takes sacrifice. It takes labor. It takes denial. So those that sacrifice, those that labor, those that deny themselves, the Bible says you need to respect them. You need to honor them. Why? So that whatever they have they have labor to build, sacrifice to build, can flow into your life and help you to fulfill your destiny. Hello? We all, every man of God, genuinely called, they receive a measure. They receive what? A measure. But through denial. Through sacrifices, Sabihu. through paying the price, garama. they build that anointing. Ule upako. And that is why Jesus said yes, in John 4:38. John 4:38. John 4:38. John 4:38. The book of John, cha Yohana. chapter 4, ne. verses number 38. Are you there? Kopale. I send you to reap the I send you to reap that where on you bestowed no labor. Other men labor. You have entered into their labors. Other men labor. You've entered into their labor. Other men labor. They sacrifice. They labor. They pay the price. And now, when you partake in the anointing, when you partake in the grace, you entered into their labor. Other men labor. And you have entered into their labor. By honoring them. By respecting them. You will inherit the grace. And the anointing on their lives. You enter into their labor. They have labor. You enter into their labor. By honoring them. By respecting them. You will inherit the grace. And the anointing on them. Therefore, Kwa hivo, they labor. You have kazi. entered into their labor. Other men labor. Watu kazi. You Wewe have entered into their labor. Kwa kazi yao. They are the ones who paid the price. They are the ones who sacrificed. They are bihu. the ones who denied. Walizikana. But now by honoring them, Mokweshimu. by respecting them, Mokweshimu you hawa. enter into their labor. You are yao. able to inherit the grace neema. and the anointing that they have been laboring to build. Hello? Is this thing entering? Is he entering? Is he entering? So every genuinely man of God Called by God, ordained by God, has been anointed under grace and has paid the sacrifices of denials. There's an anointing, there's a grace that you need to tap. And when you tap this anointing, there are certain challenges it will remove from your life. There are certain yokes it will destroy from your name. There are certain burdens it will take away from your shoulders. But you have to honor them. You have to respect them. The anointing does not flow to rebels. No. Uh -uh. The anointing Upako. does not flow Aitiriki. to the people that don't value the anointing. Upako. It flows Aitiriki. to those that honor. Aitiriki. It flows Aitiriki. to those that respect. Aitiriki. For example, Kwanfano. Mark chapter 5, Mariko tano, verses 25 to 34. Because of time, I will not read the scripture. You know the woman with the issue of blood. There was a crowd following Jesus. But only one woman went for the anointing, had value for the anointing. 
this woman, woman although she's not supposed to be in the public, she pressed away in the crowd. What, what, is, what does the pressing show? Value for Jesus. Value for the anointing. She's not permitted to be in the crowd. She's not permitted to be in the, in the, in the public. But she knew Alijua. Jesus carried something yes, well, that she needed. Alitaji. If she could only touch Jesus, she would be yesu. made whole. Angefanyika and the woman zema. said, Anasema. if I can only touch, Nikiguza. only touch Nikuse the tu. helm of his garment, I know Najua. I will tap the anointing. I will be made whole. Now, the woman did not even go to Jesus for prayer. Ako no. Yesu. The woman valued what Jesus carried. She valued the anointing. If I can only touch and get that anointing, I'll be free. There were so many people that were pushing Jesus. After Jesus was touched yes, well, and the anointing came out, went to the woman. Jesus said, yes, well, somebody touched me. Mutu Peter, Peter said, Peter we are all pushing you. People are thronging you. Jesus said, no. Yes, well, all apana. of you may be pushing me. Ma, One say, person has touched me. Mutu Mutu me that is a touch of honor. A touch wa. of demand. A touch to claim. And the woman came and says it's me. Ni mimi. And Jesus said, yes, wanasema, Thy faith imani yako has made your heart. What faith? Imani gani? Faith in me. Imani ndani faith in the anointing. Imani ko upako. You didn't even come for me to pray for you. No, oh, you had mbe. faith in me. And you had yangu. faith in the anointing I carry. Faith in the man of God. Faith in the, the anointing is what will cause the anointing to flow into your life. Other people were pushing. Other people were pushing. Only the woman went to tap. It is her that received the anointing. You can be in a place the man of God is so anointed. And the anointing will not remove challenges from your life. Why? To him is your colleague. To him is just a brother like any other brother. You don't value what he carries. So whatever he carries can never flow into your life. Another example. Luke chapter 5. Luke atano. This one, maybe we can read it. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Luke 5, 17. It came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And the power Naweza. of the Lord was present to heal them. But not one of them was healed. Why? Mbona. Because they didn't come to be healed. Wakukuja kuponywa. They came to criticize. Walikuja kukashifu. Kukashifu. They came to see how Mbona. Jesus does things. Anafanya mambo na and then gani. judge. Wahukumu. They came to see how Jesus is doing things yes, so that they gani. can be able to criticize. They didn't come to be healed. Power for healing was there. None of them got healed because they didn't come Awakuja. to make a demand Uitaji. for the anointing. They come to criticize. Verses 18. Kumna nani. And behold, Tizama. men brought in bed a man which was taken with palsy. And they sought means to bring him in. And to lay him before him. When they could not find the way. By what they might bring him in. in because of the multitude. They went upon the housetop. Let him down through the stealing. With his coach into the midst before Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. Did you see? That is what they came to do. Judge. Criticize. 
A house was full of multitudes. Not one of them was healed. Why? They didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe in what Jesus carried. They didn't make a demand of the anointing. A man came from outside who had value for Jesus. Who had value for the anointing. And when they could not get a space, they tore the room, tore the roof, brought the man down by coach. And when Jesus saw, he said, Man, your faith in me, your faith in what I carry has made you whole. Healed. Why did they tore the roof? Value for Jesus. Yeah, Value the mana. for the anointing. Yeah, they believe well, he has the anointing to heal the man. The people were inside. What the crowd was full. Like None of them was healed. Why? They were not there because they, because they believed in Jesus. They were not there because they believed he was anointed. They were not there to claim the anointing. They were there to criticize him, to judge him, find a reason to criticize him, find a reason to judge him. You have to be a good conductor of the anointing. You have to believe in your man of God. You have to believe in the anointing he carries. You have to make a demand in the anointing he carries. Otherwise, you can be with an anointed man of God and the challenges continue. The oppression continue. The affliction continue. Why? You don't believe in him. You don't believe in the anointing on him. You don't make a demand of the anointing on him. The anointing you don't value can never flow into your life. The anointing you don't value can never remove challenges from your life. The anointing you don't value can never destroy yokes from your neck. The anointing you don't value can never protect you. House was full of multitudes but not even one of the multitude was healed. And Jesus knew why they were there. That is why he said that sins for, for be, be forgiven. Why? He knew they were there to criticize. Now they began to manifest whatever they'd come to do. And Jesus asked, what is it easier? Easier to say be healed or your sins be forgiven. Now look at verse 6. Verses 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. Reason. Saying, who is this? We speak a blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what is on here in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven, thee, or to say, rise up and walk. But you may know that the Son of Man as power upon the earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the passy, I say unto thee, rise, take up thy coach, go into thy house. Thy faith in me, your faith in the anointing in me has made you whole. Multitude full, only the outsider came Value Jesus. Value the anointing. And when they could not get room, they tore the top. And Jesus, when they lowered the man down, Jesus said, you mean you people believe in me like this? You believe in what I carry like this? That you can tore the roof and bring the man down. Be healed. Value for the anointing. Value for the grace. Any anointing you don't value can never come to you. Any man of God you don't believe in, what he carries can never flow into your life. When you find what you are looking for in a man of God, number one, break your pride. Break your pride. Call him Baba. 
is your spiritual father. The inheritance flows from the father to the children. There is no anointing that flows on colleagues. Can you inherit from your brother? Can you inherit from your sister? Eh? Can you? You only inherit from your father. When you find a man of God, anointed by God, impressed by God, break your pride, call him your father. Call him your father. Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. Verses number 12. Second Kings 2.12. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, and the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and he took out of his own clothes, rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Why did the mantle fall? Because of the words, my father, my father. The mantle fell when Elijah said, my father, my father. Elijah said, when you see me, when I'm taken, then the anointing, double portion of the anointing will be your portion. When you see me what? When you see me as your father, because inheritance flows from the father to the children. And when he saw him, when he was being taken, he didn't say, my Elijah, my Elijah, my Elijah. No. He said, my father, my father, my father. And the anointing fell. And the mantle fell. Mantle represents the anointing. Mantle, mantle comes from fathers to the children. Mantle comes from the fathers to the children. Mantle comes from the fathers to the children. When you find you are sent man of God, break your pride and take him as your father. Number two, pursue him sincerely. Follow him. Follow his teachings. Sincerely. Follow him. Follow his teachings. Sincerely. Number three, tattoo. pay the price. Lipa garama, garamia. Honor him. Mweshimu. Respect him. Pata kumweshimu yeye. Honor him. Mweshimu yeye. Respect him. Patia shima zake. Honor him. Eshimu huyu. Respect him. Patia shima yake. Pray for him. Muombe. Speak good about your spiritual father. Mema kusubaba kwa kiroho. Be a blessing to him financially and materially. That is paying the price to enter into his labor. Honor him. Respect him. Pray for him. Speak well of him. Let something material financial flow from you into his hand. Number four. Allow fools. Allow fools. And mediocres to make comments while you receive. Allow fools and mediocres to make their comments while you receive. Let mediocres, let fools be criticizing while you receive. Grace to pursue. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings 6.21 
And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? This is a king calling a man of God, my father. My father. Because the anointing flows from fathers to the children. Everything that God has put on my life, may that anointing flow into your life. Remove every challenge out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy every yoke out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove every burden out of your shoulder in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the number one assignment of the prophetic anointing? The prophetic anointing executes deliverance. We we'll look at that shortly and then we go to the anointing. The prophetic anointing executes deliverance. God needed a man to deliver Israel out of bondage. God is the Almighty. But God cannot deliver a people without a people. God cannot deliver a people without a person. Hello? He can't. So in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 10, God says, I have heard the cry of the children of Israel. I have seen the afflictions. I have come down to deliver them. And then he said, Moses, I am coming down through you. Come. The earth a gift to the children of men. When God wants to do anything on this earth, he has to look for a man, he has to anoint a man for him to do the job. The heavens, the heavens belongs to him. But the earth he has given to the children of man. When, man, when God wants to reach men, he will look for a man. When God wants to deliver a people, he will look for a man. When God wants to prosper a people, he will look for a man. Exodus 3. Book of Exodus 3, verse 7. And the Lord say, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land onto a good land, a land, onto a land that flowing with milk and honey onto the place of the Canaanites Intites, Mahiti, Amorites, Mahomori, Perisites, Baruzi, Evites, Mahivi, Shubisites. Mabusi. Now therefore, Basiatizama. behold the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me Kimenifikia. and I have also seen their oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore and I will send thee Nakutuma. unto Pharaoh Kwaferao. that thou may bring forth Kwatoe. my people, Watu the children of Israel, out of Egypt, Kutoka come Misri. now therefore. I have seen, I have come down, but I'm coming down through you. I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to put the grace on you for you to deliver my people out of the bondage of Egypt. Three million people could not be able to handle Pharaoh. Three million people could not conquer Pharaoh. Three million people could not conquer the idols of Egypt. But one man of God, anointed and engraved, broke the backbone of Pharaoh, broke the backbone of the idol gods of Egypt, and was able to deliver the people. Your father Babayako is anointed Amepako to deliver you from every bondage. The anointing Upako and the grace on him is for your deliverance. 
There are so many other benefits. But one of the benefits of the anointing and the grace of God on your pastor is for your deliverance to break the bondage you cannot break. To destroy the yokes you cannot be able to destroy. To destroy the afflictions you cannot be able to destroy. To destroy the snares you cannot be able to destroy. To destroy the hand of the devil from your life that you cannot be able to destroy. It handles what you cannot handle. Fights what you cannot fight. Or it handles what you cannot handle. Three million people could not confront Pharaoh. He took an anointed man to say, Pharaoh, let my people go. So they are anointed to confront what you cannot confront. They are anointed to destroy what you cannot destroy. They are anointed to defend you from what you cannot handle. I pray that none of you will be a victim of evil this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you go, may this anointing go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. May this anointing protect you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hosea 12, 13. Verses number 13. The book of Hosea. By prophet, the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt. By prophet, what they preserved. Hosea 12 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by prophet, was it preserved? By prophet, they were delivered. And by prophet, they were preserved. By prophet, the anointing on the prophet is for deliverance. The anointing on the prophet is for preservation. By the anointing on the prophet, he brought Israel out of Egypt. By the anointing on the prophet, he preserved them. I pray this oil will come upon you. Deliver you from every hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that has said he will not let you go. I command their hands cut off. Out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's chapter 17. Verses 8. Exodus 17, 8. 1, 2, 3, let's read. Then came Amalek, fought with Israel in Raphadim. Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us men and go out fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and Ur went up into the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he laid down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Failed. Why was it Moses? Why was it the hand of Moses? Because it was Moses that was anointed. If Aaron lifted up his hand, nothing will have happened. If Ur lifted up his hand, nothing will have happened. But the man that was anointed, when he lifted up their hand, in, their, in favor of them, they won. The words Maneno. your father speaks over your life, the prayer it does for you will make you to win where you will have lost. Words. Maneno. It speaks to you. God help them. 
had is enough. His words are different. They are different from the words of any other man. What makes the words different? The oil of him makes his words to be different in terms of impact and results. The oil Mafuta. The oil. Mafuta. You see, even after Saul misbehaved, David said, I can't touch the anointing. Mm. David knew the oil. He knew the value of the oil. He was Mafuta. anointed. Alipakwa. But this one has been anointed. He mafuta. said no. Siwezi. Can't touch. Siwezi kusa. Woo. Woo. I know how God values the oil. Can't touch. Siwezi kusa. The difference is in the oil. Ni kwa the words Maneno. that he speaks Ananena. are backed by the oil. Na the mafuta. prayer he prays are backed by the oil. If it is Ur that had lifted his hand, Joshua will not have won. If it was Aaron, Joshua will not have won. It was the man anointed for them. The man anointed to deliver them. The man anointed to preserve them. It was that man when he lifted up his hand in their favor, they won. The words. Maneno. Every week I speak over your life. Kila juma Go. Yako. You are protected. Umelidua. Going out. Enda Coming to. in his place. What am I? I'm lifting up my hand over your life. You will never lose any battle in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never Yesu. lose any battle in the name of Jesus Christ. Vita kwa jina la Yesu. In 2 Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Ine. Verses eight. Nani. And it fell on a day siku. that Elisha passed to Shunem. Where was the great woman? She constrained him to eat bread. And so it was. That as often as he passed by, he turned there to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is the holy man of God, which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall. Let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in there and it fell on a day that he came there and he turned to the chamber and lay there and he said to Gehazi his servant call this Shunammite and when he had called her she stood before him he said unto him Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Or is thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And he answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shall embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto your handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. This woman made provision for the anointing. How many men, women had seen Elisha? Very many. Did the anointing on Elisha made every barren woman in Judah fruitful? No. Why this woman? 
she valued him as a man of god alimdhamini kama mtumishi wake mungu she made provision for the anointing alifanya utualizi kwa upako she said every time you come to this city unapokuja kwa mji huu please don't sleep in the hotel usiende kwenye mikahawa there is a room we have built for you kuna chumba tumekusengezea please be coming to sleep there kuja ulale pale please don't be eating in the hotel usikule kwa mikahawa there is food kuna chakula prepared for you imeandaliwa kwako and as he comes anapokuja he sleeps there analala he pale anakula comes, anakuja he sleeps there analala pale anakula pale one day siku moja elisha says woman Elisha, come what is the, do you have anything to be done to you he said no i tell among my people do you don't have any need unahitaji lolote and gear says she has no child hana mtoto anointing hiyo pako destroy the yoke of barrenness inaribu nira ya utasa that anointing remove the challenge from the moto. woman's life but moto. the woman made provisions for the anointing she honored the man of god something mungu. left her pocket to the mwake. hand man of god something left her kitchen to the kwake. stomach of the man of god she wake. made provision for the anointing Make this week Jumahili, as you go forth unapoenda may God's anointing come upon you ikujie, preserve you ikuifadhi, destroy every snare kila mteko, destroy every bondage kila mabusu, destroy every captivity kila mateka, out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ kwa jina la Yesu anything that will not allow you to come out of Egypt misri, by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ by the oil mafuta, God has put on my life I mgati. command the same oil to come upon your life destroy yokes in the name of Jesus Christ destroy bondages in the name of Jesus Christ remove challenges out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ destroy the Malachites in the name of Jesus Christ. Say those that are pursuing you in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy 